Hello everybody, welcome back. I, um, I'm kind of skipping forward in the instructions slightly. Um, I am going to get my balsa wood pieces um, sealed with my uh, wood filler and then sand, sand those smooth. Um, in, the, in the instruction sheet, this part comes after the rocket's assembled, uh, but for me, I find it much, much easier to do this part um, before everything's glued on. Um, it's just for me. Um, if you can, if you work just fine uh, doing all this afterwards, by all means, do that. Uh, but just for me, I like doing this uh, before I glue everything on. So first step will be sanding smooth the fins while they're still attached. sheet. Three. Okay. And once again, I like to stack everything together. And get the flat edges sanded nice and smooth. With the shape of the fin, uh, since that's in between those two little bumps, I won't be able to use my sanding tee. So I'm just carefully sanding freehand. to that, um, this portion, the shorter edge, is actually the leading edge of the fins, so I'll also sand a round shape into that. Um, the long edge is actually where, we'll, where it will be glued, so I, won't, I will not uh, sand a rounded shape into that. So if, to shape the fin, I'll just use my trusty sanding tee. Pretty good. Okay, set that aside for now. And I will need my paper. My little empty guacamole tub. Some wood filler and styrofoam block. Now, if you've seen some of my earlier videos that I have used this, um, it's it's not it's a non-toxic material. It really doesn't 
irritate the skin, but the reason I still use the gloves um, is for easy cleanup. I do not have access to a sink in my workshop. Um, mentioned before, it is in my garage. Um, so that just makes it easier to clean up if I don't have to worry about uh, water. But Nice purple color there. Purple does happen to be one of my favorite colors. If you didn't know that about me, you'd, now you do. Not the reason I chose this, I didn't realize. Well, no, it did. Well, it's got a purple color on the outside. I don't know if I realized it would be that would be the color of the product or not. But the fact that it changes color was a big reason I got it. This is gonna be more than I need, but that's okay. I'll just put the rest back in when I'm finished. And another reason I got it is because it is water soluble. So I just spray a little bit of water in there and mix it around until it's thin enough consistency that I can paint it with a brush. So initially it's a little too thick to paint with. Um, it's kind of meant more like with woodworking, like a, a spackle or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever actually used this product quite like uh, maybe it was originally intended by most of its users, but it works for this. I'm going to thin that out just a little more. And This looks pretty good. Yeah, whatever I don't use, I'll just scrape back into the original container. But for now, put a lid on it. Okay. And to help hold it, I'm using some little embroidery needles I got at Michael's. I've seen people use um, like music wire, different things like that, just different kinds of stiff, thin wire, whatever works for you. Um, this works for me trick is trying to get it in a location that kind of where the balance location of the fin is kind of its center line, center of gravity, so that it won't just try to flop in one locate one direction for me. Um, and I'm putting the needle in where the root edge is. Um, so I don't paint that because I don't want to seal that. I, I want the glue to soak into that. Everything else I can paint. It'll be so. And then this lets me get all the sides. And also when it's drying, um, I've got my block of styrofoam there so that it stands up uh, while it's dry so that it, air can get all the way around. Just going to blow off some extra of the sawdust that's on there. Um, the reason I want uh, the air to get to all sides uh, is because I'll be painting all both sides of this at the same time. And since this is a water product, 
um, it's introducing water to the wood and if I only did one side at a time and tried to let it dry flat uh, it very well could warp the wood. I'm just getting the edge there while I've got it. Flip it around and do this side. If I get a little bit of the filler on the root edge of the fin, I'm not worried. Um, I can sand that off um, as long as I don't seal the entire thing. I should be okay. And there's different kinds of products people use to seal balsa wood and some people just don't worry about sealing and, and that's fine too. And I don't, like I've mentioned, I don't seal every kit I've built. Uh, it kind of depends on the complexity of the fins. Really complex fins, especially any that involve um, gluing different parts together at different times. I usually don't bother with filling or sealing. Um, just because I really, you know, you don't, you know, I don't want to seal the parts that will be glued and I don't want to, you know, so sometimes you just, if you glue fins together and then seal them, that works. Sometimes you don't glue things together until it's already assembled on the body. And, you know, like I've said before, I really, by that point, I really don't want to bother with painting this on and then trying to sand while the fin's attached to the body. I just feel as clumsy as I can be sometimes, um, all that I would accomplish is knocking the fin clean off. And I don't wanna do that. So this one looks pretty good. Um, just trying to make sure it looks like I have a fairly even coat to both sides. Um, you know, again, we're in, I'm introducing water, so I want to try to keep it as even as possible to minimize any warping. So one done. I'll get the other two done, and I will see you again in a little bit. Nose cone, I'm not going to worry about um, using the needle to hold it uh, because this part, the shoulder, I'm not going to worry about sealing because uh, I don't want to build anything up on that. I'm just going to seal the upper portion and sand it smooth. Uh, while I'm doing this, I might uh, do a quick refresher on why I like to do this with some you know, when I can, some builds when I can do it. Um, what this product does is it soaks into the fibers of the wood and then when I sand it after it's dry, it is completely smooth. Sometimes it takes a couple of coats, a couple of sandings, uh, but most of, for the most part I can do it in one go. Um, and once it is completely dry and sanded smooth, um, it just helps to create a very smooth finish on the balsa wood. It evens out 
all the grains. Um, and then once it's all painted and primed, it's got a perfectly flat, smooth surface. It also, once it's dry, it kind of creates a barrier. Um, it's a surface that primer will take to very well. Uh, primer takes to almost anything. Um, but when you have raw balsa wood, uh, because it is so light and porous, um, primer can just soak right into it. So this may eliminate or reduce the amount of primer anyway that I will need in the finished product or the finished uh, rocket. wood although the first couple of fins I've done have already started drying pretty well and they're starting to turn white maybe I'll show you those real quick before I sign off I'm just getting some more coverage on this one where it's a little thin most of this gets sanded away anyway, but it does help to create a really smooth surface. And if you have any irregular shapes or and depending on how the nose, like with balsa nose cones, uh, depending on how they shape it, um, those tool marks can't, or yeah, tools can leave marks. Uh, this can help to smooth that out as well. Don't have to worry too much about tool marks with the uh, fins because they're laser cut. It looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll set that aside to dry. Yeah, if you look at this, this first one here is just about, you can see a lot of the white already. So um, it's going to take some, some more time to fully dry. Um, so once that is done, I will be back for the next step. So thanks again for joining me here, and I'll see you again soon.